Heidi from Healing Harvest Homestead and I'm getting ready to make some natural remineralizing uh, tooth powder uh, that we use in our home instead of toothpaste. And um, I didn't know this for many, many years, but you can actually help your teeth remineralize based on what you put in it and what you brush your teeth with, um, as well as what you eat too. But um, this is a very, very mineral rich tooth powder that's easy to use, it tastes great, and it makes your, your mouth and your teeth feel fabulous. Um, most of it is, uh, well, I'll go through the ingredients with you here. Anyway, I'm Heidi from Healing Harvest Homestead. That's my website. I'd love for you to check it out. Um, subscribe if you uh, want to do that right now that would be awesome but anyway uh, let's go ahead and talk about natural tooth care for a moment so um, if you take care of your teeth obviously we all know this the chances of you getting uh, cavities and uh, you know gum disease and things like that are greatly reduced the ingredients that I'm going to show you that are very very simple that I'm using in this tooth powder are all helpful for your mouth in some way or another um, I've written an article about this tooth powder recipe it's on my website I'll link to it below and and I'll go I, in that article I get into all the science and you know all of the nitty-gritty but for now just trust me that and I'll and I'll kind of gloss over what these do but all of these ingredients are excellent so the first ingredient that I put in here is I put in some calcium powder. This is a tablespoonful, and I don't have a container for it like I do these other ingredients because I just made this with our eggshells that I get from my chickens. So you can make your own calcium powder, uh, which is calcium carbonate from chickens, or you can go to the store and you can buy it. Um, it's not expensive. Um, you want to be sure that you're getting calcium carbonate though and not citrate or citrite, okay? You want calcium carbonate. And then, so one tablespoon of that, and then you're gonna go ahead and you're going to add in four tablespoons of bentonite clay. Now you want bentonite clay, it's, it's very, very mineral rich and um, it's super good for your teeth. Uh, you don't want to use other clays because they contain different things. Um, and you definitely want to be sure that it's food grade, okay? Um, and then, after that, I use myrrh gum powder. Uh, and it's myrrh. It's the uh, Comifora myrrha, okay? And it's uh, M-Y-R-R-H. You will have to buy this. This comes from the myrrh gum tree that comes from the Middle East, which is also where frankincense grows. Um, it's the same myrrh that was given to the baby Jesus by the Magi <laughs> at his birth. Um, but myrrh is an excellent, excellent um, resin to use for a lot of different things, but your teeth and your mouth especially. Okay, it's very, very healing. And I'm going to use two tablespoons of myrrh gum powder. All right, the next thing I'm going to use is some sage powder. This is sage leaf that came from our garden that I powdered up, okay? And um, so I didn't even, this was free, but <laughs> you can certainly buy sage uh, if you want to. And I'm gonna use a whole tablespoon of sage here. Put it in there, maybe a little bit more. The sage is a very, very astringent herb. And what it does is it tightens and it tones your gums. So, and not only does it tighten and tone your gums for their health, but it also helps because it's got very strong antiseptic and antimicrobial qualities. Super, super, super good for your mouth, okay? Then final ingredient, besides the essential oils I'm going to use, and I'll talk about those in a minute, minute um, is sea salt. You want some kind of mineral rich sea salt. So I've got this uh, pure sea salt from Kirkland, which is Costco brand. And I'm only going to use, um, what do I have here? I've got my recipe written down. Uh, about a teaspoon, all right? I don't want a whole bunch here. I, I actually try to take it easy on the salt, um, but you can add more if you want to. Um, but salt is just really helpful for cleansing your mouth. And now I'm going to just give it a good little mix here. And get some of the clays up on top. Okay. 
Normally I would mix this in a larger bowl and then pour it into my little um, four ounce jelly jar, which is what I'm using here. But I've done this recipe so many times <laughs> and I know that um, this amount works perfectly for this jelly jar. So instead of dirtying another jar, I'm just gonna go ahead and mix everything in there. Now, as far as the essential oils go, I'm gonna go ahead, I've got my, it's pretty mixed in real well here. So I've got the powders mixed with the herbs, mixed with the salt, and I'm gonna add my essential oils. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, add 12 drops of tea tree. Um, and you want to buy a good quality brand since it's going in your mouth. Normally, I do not advocate using essential oils internally at all, but this is actually considered an external topical use because it's on the inside of your mouth. It's not actually going down uh, into your esophagus unless you swallow, which you don't want to do. <laughs> all right, but the tea tree adds extra uh, antimicrobial powers and breath, breath freshening as well. And then you can add some other essential oils of choice after this if you want to. Um, so some good choices would be clove, cinnamon, peppermint, lemon. Um, there's all kinds of very, very good essential oils that you could add for flavor and also for extra um, benefits as far as being antimicrobial or antiseptic or, you know, uh, good for fighting germs and things. I'm going to add this blend here, and this is a mixture of cinnamon, uh, clove, rosemary, um, eucalyptus, and lemon. It's a very nice blend. And it's extremely um, antimicrobial and good for your mouth. So 12 drops of tea tree, and then you can add, you know, 15 to 20 drops of the essential oil of your choice um, or some additional tea tree if you like. And that's it. I've got tooth powder. Now, this tooth powder obviously is not wet or moist like most, most toothpastes are. So the way you use this is you, you've got a couple of choices. You can go ahead and add um, a tablespoon or two of water and moisten it up and it'll just be kind of a paste that you leave in your bathroom. Um, you can do this if you like. However, I, I don't like to do that myself only because I don't like to have um, moist things sitting around my bathroom. Anything with moisture, which is, you know, water, can cause mold and cause bacteria to grow. Even though this is filled with antimicrobial uh, ingredients, you just don't want that. So um, I don't recommend that unless you make maybe half of this amount and use it up quickly. This is probably a good month's worth of toothpaste. The other way you can use this tooth powder is simply to dip your dry toothbrush or your wet toothbrush if you're the only one using it into it, get a good little scoop, and then just simply brush your teeth. Um, the saliva in your mouth is definitely enough moisture to get it going and to brush your teeth really well. And if not, just add a little water and you're good to go. But um, this is an excellent tooth powder. I love using it. Um, you know, sometimes I'll go back to, and I always, if I do buy toothpaste from the store, which is rare. I'll usually buy a natural brand like Redmond or one of those. But I tell you what, um, when I come back to using my own, it's always better. It's always, always better. It tastes better. My mouth feels better. It, it's healthier. Um, and, uh, you know, my gums feel better. Everything just feels better <laughs> with this natural natural toothpaste. In addition to that, I know what's in it. So um, I'll link to my article below. You can read all about the science um, that, that's about the ingredients that goes into this, um, as well as, as the science behind the ingredients that are in commercial toothpastes, which will probably change your mind about using any kind of commercial uh, toothpaste ever again. The other factor to consider when you're making your own tooth powder like this is the cost. Uh, this tooth powder, you know, I, I had to lay out the money for the initial ingredients, of course, but honestly, I've had some of these ingredients for literally now going on four years uh, because I just don't use that much of it. So in that regard, it's 
literally pennies on the dollar. If you're into uh, preparedness like we are, uh, one thing that I know is that like bentonite powder, I have this jar here, it's about a half full mason jar size of bentonite clay, and it's gonna last me literally years, and it's got multiple uses. Same thing with mergam powder. I might lay out a little bit at first, but I'm going to have it for years. It's a useful herb for many, many medicinal things, and I'm gonna have it forever. The salt, of course, is very inexpensive. Um, sage I grow, the eggshells my chickens lay, now, honestly, this tooth powder, this little bit here, probably cost me a quarter, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this little video, and I hope you'll give this tooth powder a try. I think you're going to love it. It's a great way to save money. It's a great way to keep your teeth healthy. It's a great way to live naturally and get rid of the toxins in your life. And I, I hope you uh, like this and subscribe and uh, follow me at all the places below in the description. I'd love to have you uh, join me. And uh, I think you might like my Practical Herbs with Heidi group on Facebook, if you're on Facebook. Um, it's a really great way to learn about natural remedies and, and herbs in a free group. All right, I'll talk with you soon. Uh, glad you're here. See you later.